At 5.06 p.m., the Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting. Uh, all commissioners are present, as is Mike Sullivan, Beth Essery. Um, Eli is here and Eli Emerson and Sarah Brace. Brace, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Brace, yes. And who is We the People? Brooke. It's Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Uh, and Brooke Dingledin, uh, Brooke Dingledin, our attorney is here. Um, are there any modifications to the minutes, uh, to the agenda? Yeah, if we could do Sarah right off, that would be best for all of you. Okay. Any other modifications? Okay, um, hearing none, the, we will take Sarah next um let's not forget so, the minutes like we've been known to do oh yeah why don't we do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't forget the minutes we'll okay. let's just do sarah but okay. sarah is uh, one of our newer staff members at bepsa a very welcome newer staff member uh i've been impressed with her and her abilities and uh lynn you got to work with her a little bit on our filing there and uh if you'd like to do a 30 second intro sarah please do and then uh, take it away Great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, yes, yeah, Sarah Braze. I come from the trade association world serving the electric utilities in the Northeast, and I am thrilled to be working now at BEPSA and serving our members throughout the state. Um, manager of government member relations, so I handle a lot of our PUC filings, working with the department, collaborating with the members, and overall trying to help with whatever needs you may have to better to operate and to make life a little bit easier. <laughs> Um, Mike, did they receive the, did your, the, they received the packet that I gave the VEPSA board or there? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I figured it would be best use of time to not go through every single docket that's open. Uh, my report includes details and some history on dockets that may not have a specific update as of the writing, but I was hoping to answer any questions you may have or concerns that you may have on open dockets or initiatives? It, the, uh, the RFI for the, the net metering, uh, that actually got the due date got changed to today. Correct, yes. So BEPSA filed a, our, an individual response and we also filed a joint response with the rest of the distribution utilities in the state. There were several uh, specific priorities that we could agree on. And at this stage in the RFI, we found that that would be a united front to address some of the issues that the department plans to bring up during their review process. One of which was encouraging the 18 month timeline uh, so that it would give enough time and space for the stakeholder engagement component, which is such a big piece of their proposed uh, review. Uh, you know, I can send to you. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd, I'd love to see those. Yeah, I mean, I'm sending in my own later today, just yep. as, an, as an individual, but I'd love to see what BEPS is saying, especially since it has such an impact on the, on the munis. Absolutely. Is, is there any effort to try to phase out net metering? The priorities that we presented discuss a more expedited review of group net metering due to the impact that that can have and not being at the site of demand. Um, so, but that was something that we addressed as a priority for review. We did not propose any solutions in this phase of the RFI. And yeah, no, trans no transforming a net billing, for example. No, okay. that was not part of the priority that we addressed at this point. Uh, Vince, we I figure, oh, go ahead. I didn't, I didn't catch what Vince had asked. Uh, I, I just said uh, tra uh, converting the net metering to net billing, which, which means um, net, uh, rather than getting the that enhanced retail rate, you end up getting a wholesale rate on your on your excess production, or and or um, well, that should, and whatever you produce. My, my concern is, is actually more with individual net metering than with the group net metering because of the distributive effects. 
because group net metering at least has the potential for someone who doesn't have the ability to either because they're a renter and, and they can't or because of income, they don't have the credit to uh, participate in net metering. Uh, but net metering is, is, is it, to me, is a windfall for, by and large, for the, for the solar companies um, and for affluent people who can, who can take advantage of, of the tax credits. And, um, you know, I think, I think solar is great. I think there are better ways to do it, but I would, I would really like to see VEPSA um, addressing um, the issue that it's, 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 it's not a particularly equitable way to foster solar. And that one of the other group net yeah. metering is better in that respect. Okay. Yeah, one of the positions we took was definitely around equity. And so I think, like I said, we did not propose any solutions. We said that net metering should be reviewed sooner than the 18 month timeline. That that is something that should continue to be discussed more frequently. So we didn't, like I said, we didn't particularly present any solutions in those group responses because we felt that that was not the intent of the initial RFI. And, and the that was one component. The, the others were the, uh, the renewable energy standard uh, and uh, what was the other one? I can't remember, but you know, uh, in fact, I think that was the primary, that was the primary level of review. And then that metering was second and then, and then there was another one. Yes, yeah, so the joint positions, we discussed the timeframe consideration, you know, the policy considerations that the electricity emissions are low comparable to others within the state and that uh, thermal and transportation should be the pr primary focus uh, to, for this review. Affordability as a form of climate and equity, um, the res and the policy structure, the net metering and procurement, load growth and renewables, and you know each of those. And then a conclusion. That's the structure of this joint response. But those were the high points. And like I said, we raised some concerns around those. Suggested that they be a part of the consideration and review process but did not particularly put in any suggestions for change uh, at this point. Okay, so, so that's interesting. So what's, oh, so what's the timeline to, for going forward, Sarah, on this? Well, the responses were due today. So I assume the department's gonna take four weeks maybe tops to kind of compile that and then determine what their next steps will be. But I mean, for more uh, more input from VEPSA and the munis, when does that come? Well, I think we will start to frame out the best way to actively engage each of the, the members uh, so that we can get your feedback and the specifics of your priorities and concerns as we go through this process, I think we'll know more when the department issues their, their workshops. I know that they're planning to hold several workshops and that may be a good place to have everyone on the same page, attend one or two of those and then, or one of those and then have follow-ups so that we can make a, a position for the for VEPSA members. So we, we can reasonably expect maybe an update in a month or so. Yes. Okay. I have the schedule, uh, if I can send it to everybody. That would be good. For, for review. Does anyone have anything else for, for Sarah? Can we, can we jump to the grid hardening, which I, I see this says Vermont's scheduled to get $5 billion of money for grid hardening. Is that correct number? Uh, should be five million, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's formula billion. grant funding. The department had requested that the distribution utilities collaborate, discuss if we could find joint, you know, common ground on priority projects. We haven't quite gotten there yet, <laughs> but several priorities have been identified, and we're planning to meet with the department as a you know DU group 
and see what specific information they want so we can provide that to them. They have a, their due date to the DOE for their proposal is I believe September 30th. Yeah. So that's their timeline. And assuming they get the formula grant funding, then they will be the interim uh, for approving specific projects. So, so Mike, do we have any anything we need to do for grid hardening and resilience that we wanna apply for? Would Absolutely. Is there free money out there? I'm going to apply for something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> September 30th. So September 30th is not us to VEPS, but VEPSA to the people who are funding? That is for the Department of Public Service to submit their plan, which it they don't necessarily have to have specifics in their plan or proposal to the DOE to be the recipient of the formula funding, but they will be the ones who receive our proposals afterwards once they've been acknowledged and identified as that funder funding agent okay so we have to get anything to you by December September 30th or after September 30th we can come up with some ideas that we'd like to do yeah if you I mean if there are specific things that you want that you know of now absolutely send them to me and we can include that in in the list um you know we have some pretty overarching hardening things that would work <laughs> with the okay. with the group so Thank you. Yeah, Sarah, is there, what's like the number one targeted project or, or conceptual project at this point? Um, there was no top one. There were a few that seemed to be across the board for everyone, but let me, let me pull this up. The Strategic line relocation and undergrounding, um, sub transmission and distribution system asset upgrades. Those were the two automated uh, switching and feeder backup. Those were kind of the main ones that were coming up. Um, we have an automated. <laughs> Can we, we do, have can feeder we backup? For something we've done already. Like, haven't we done some of this already, Mike? We're in the pro we're in the process of getting into our, uh, a feeder backup circuit right. between subs. It would be great because that's a big project with a lot of money. Needs a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, um, and as far as more funding goes, it's going to be either is available right now or will be shortly. The RFIs are not RFIs. The RFIs are already up, but the the um, Grant opportunities are going to be are either available or, or will become available under previous funding, not under the new uh, uh, inflation reduction funding. But uh, for the mine lands, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, it's uh, 500 million dollars for innovative solar. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I thought of a perfect location for it, the Belvedere thing. But in any case, I, I can forward that too. And then there's the EESE uh, grant, uh, long duration energy storage. And there's, I think, $2 billion for that. And then $750 million for, uh, let's see. These things, I mean, I, I was at a, a uh, uh, the, what is it, CESA webinar, and they just went through it with uh, uh, Sandy and DOE, the money that was available. But a lot of them, I could see being applicable to Hydric Electric specifically and VEPSA specifically. I mean, I'd be happy to send that link along, those links along. Yeah, that would be great. We send also have a consultant that we work with in DC that helps send us digest of grant, you know, funding opportunities that are out there. So we receive that at least once a month, if not more. And we do look look through those. And if any other things come up, we also do that. Um, you know, check in on those and they they will let us know. That sure. being said, I'm glad you brought up the long duration battery storage. Uh, we actually I'm at the NEPA conference attending that, and there was a uh, new company that's doing long duration 100 hours of storage. Uh, so they're in some of the, you know, manufacturing stages, which is very exciting. And I think that may is, be a, a, an interesting or, partnership. Is it flow or gravity or what, what is it? No, of course, I'm not going to remember the, the name of the company right now. Um, hold on one moment. Just, just curious. Uh, yeah, uh, it was 
Form, form energy. Right, okay, so there, I think they're a flow battery company. Is, is that right? I mean, this is, it's a, yeah, anyway, sorry, I don't mean to. Anyway. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think if we have questions on, on yeah. policy or anything that Sarah has provided us. The, the one. I see the time is going. Does anyone else have anything? We'll come back to you, Vince, but. I don't sure. know. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm sorry, I, I tend to get into the weeds. I did want to ask about the uh, the care or acre or whatever it was, though. Uh, let's see. The, and there was a and wanted to know how Vepsa responded to that because there was a lot of money available. Uh, acre program, affordable community renewable energy request for proposals. It was due August fifth. I don't know if folks had any proposals. We did not get overwhelming response from members on applicable sites or anything like that at this point. I don't think that is the end of the possibilities though, but yeah. we, we did not, we participated in the process while they were developing the program, but we did not submit anything. It was, I looked at the qualifications. I didn't have the energy. Uh, after the last one, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, looked like a good applicable program. I know that one of the other distribution utilities, they had just had a solar, a solar array come online just last summer. And so by that cutoff date, they're able to use that and apply that for, for this program. I think it would be hard to put something you know, get something cited and installed and all of that in such a short time frame. But I believe the department's intent is for this to be a long-standing program. It is, okay, great. Anything else from anyone else? Because I, Mike, yes. Yeah, Sarah, I just wanna get on your radar for at least our next two monthly meetings. We okay. meet the first Monday of every month at 5 p.m. And uh, I'll be having you on the agenda for the next couple, okay? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mike, did you say we're meeting the first Monday of the month? I think I, I did. I meant the third. My apologies. <laughs> Good catch, Lynn. <laughs> well, at least I want to have it booked every... <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay, well, if, if no one has anything else, Sarah, thank you so much for, for providing the information and for joining us and answering questions. Absolutely, anytime. And if anything comes up between now and your next meeting, uh, feel free to pass it along to Mike or myself and we'll be happy to, to help as we can. And I'll, Mike, I'll send you the final submissions for the RFI here right after we jump off. And, and if anything comes up in, in the interim, you know, send it along as well um, so that we can take advantage of things on a timely basis. I know these things Ooh. don't have a lot of lead time a lot of the yeah. time. That is true. <laughs> well, th thank you very much. And like I said, if anything comes up, let me know. Thank, thank you. Thank Enjoy you. your meeting. Take care. Yeah. You too. So now circle back to the minutes. <laughs> okay. So we have two sets of minutes. Um, three, three. Um, I emailed two more to, to you on Friday. There was one included in the board packet from oh, last okay. month. Okay. Yes. No, two I, was, I, I emailed thinking, you. Right. Okay. I was thinking of the, the, the emails, but there is, where are the minutes in the board packet? Are they at the end? Cause I missed them. They're at the beginning for the ones for last month. They're at the beginning. They're on page four. Four. Oh, sorry, I grabbed I grabbed too much paper at once. Okay, why don't we take those up? So the minutes from seven eighteen twenty two. Um, does anyone have any corrections or comments on those minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to accept the minute to approve the minutes? I move to accept the minutes. Second. Okay, okay. Uh, any objection? Hearing none, the July 18 minutes are approved, which then takes us to the March 21st minutes. Are there any uh, 
Comments or changes? And I don't know how much of a stickler we are, but it doesn't have who moved to adjourn or second. I would just assume, you know, I don't know who moved to adjourn. Um, and were we coming yeah. out of, um, yeah, the the problem was we were no longer recorded then. I think the, it, it's, right. it, it's, it's, it's a technical thing and I can't oh. imagine that there's any issue. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So move. Is there a second? second? Any second. objection? Hearing none, the minutes are approved, which takes us to the minutes of April 18th. Are there any changes to those minutes? Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second? Second. Any objections? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Okay, so we've got all of those done. Now, sorry about that. This to this NRECA resolution. Eli, can you give us a little explanation? I, I know you sent the email to Mike. Well, why don't we, Beth, why don't you give a little explanation of okay. the NRECA resolution and then Eli, you can speak to checking it out for me. Yeah, so NRECA handles our 401ks and each year, every two years there has to be a plan restatement and approved by the board. It's okay. basically a form amendment, a uh, form that they send out and the box is just there's no changes being made in our plan. It's just a legal thing they have to do every two years to get it, the restatement approved. But if we wanted to make changes, now is the time to make the changes. Okay, well, I will note that my name is spelled wrong and my title is wrong. <laughs> uh, but I have an E at oh, the end of my first name. It does name. have an E. Uh, yeah, I know it does have an E. Got it. <laughs> And I'm not the president of the board, I'm the chair. They put that. Um, I will make those changes. Okay. Um, I, I had some questions about this, quite frankly. I don't know if, if others had questions about it, but the way I read this, um, we start making contributions the first to the 401k, which is not the pension. Uh, let me let me back up. There is a pension in addition to the four hundred one k. Yes. Okay. So this is this is extra stuff, and we contribute to that. So this is extra. And how much? And and what is our pension contribution? Five, a little over five percent, five point five, I believe. And that's going into a defined benefit plan. Yep. So it's it's already a fairly generous plan. And yeah, that was swapped over last negotiations. Uh, we went, the crew and the staff went from group A to group B, which increased the percentage from three and a half percent to five and a half percent, I think, right, right in those arena. Um, and they did take a uh, sub significantly reduced wage increase that year. Uh, yeah, significantly reduced wage increase uh, which eased the blow for us that year. Now, are the provisions of the 401k, all these various boxes, is that part of the union contract or is, or is that, in other words, are yes. we- Yes, the NRECA so 401k is in the bargaining agreement and Hardwick Electric uh, contributes 1.5% of uh, the employee's base salary, no more. They can put in anything they want, but all HED does is 1.5. And per the contract, that's from the first full month of employment? Uh, no, they don't get uh, full bennies till they become a, a full-time permanent employee, which is after six months. But it's that's not what this month. says. This is marked one month. Okay, well, I 
I'm telling you what the contract says. All right. Well, then this should be six months as well. That's that's why that's why I'm asking. I was surprised to see that we started putting money into people's 401ks the month that they started working. Um, that would be a bit unusual, I think. So, so we put in one and a half percent, regardless of what they put in. Right. If they put in 50 percent, we still only put in one point five. But is it matching up to 1.5? In other words, if they put in nothing, do we still put in 1.5? We put in 1.5 regardless, yes. Yeah. And that, I, I agree, Lynn. My perception is that's highly unusual. We should review that. We should, I'm sorry? We should, we should, we should consider a more normal approach, which is matching up to a threshold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the contract says that we put in one and a half, no matter what. Yep. Okay. So if that's oh, I'm sorry. Work. I was. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I was thinking, the non-contract employees. Well, I think oh, okay. My view is 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 that the staff should be getting the same. the the non The non-union employees yeah. should be getting the same as the union employees. Um, in in terms of in terms of 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 of, of benefits, um, I I think it's. Well, yet to a point, I mean, that the union employees have a pension. We all have a pension. They all have you a all pension. have the same pension? Yeah. Except for Mike. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. everybody has, I, I, we've, I think we've always, I mean, there's nothing that says we have to continue doing it, but I, I happen to think it is good policy to have the same benefits no, I, I agree. I understand. Unit. That was my mistake, my misunderstanding. Um, and if that's contractually obligated, there's no point. There's no point in, in it's something to consider, but it's since we're looking yeah. at this now yes. and we're going to be out of cycle when we're looking at it next time, I think it's worth, you know, noting things, but the contract doesn't require that we start paying the first month of employment. And I think that, that is that correct. That's changed, correct. reflect what the contract says. Um, I think I had one other question in here. Good, good catch, Lynn. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Bye. I'm just sorry. I'm just flipping pages. Um, yeah, I wondered why um, we didn't allow people to contribute uh, to, to make Roth contributions. I mean, it we may, don't it have may a, be yet. We don't have a Roth it, plan. We don't have a Roth nope. that they can contribute into? Nope. Okay. So I, I just have a question. Maybe I misunderstand it, but on page 33 at the bottom B, employer base contribution, it's checked. This is participating system shall contribute to each participant's account an employer base contribution equal to one and a half percent of the participant's compensation. But it doesn't say base compensation, base salary no or full salary. So which one is it? Base. It's always your base pay. Oh, okay. It's, it's there's a box checked elsewhere. <laughs> right. It says base. Still, it's it's yeah. It's good to. But this is this is the form that we can't. Um, but it it doesn't. Act, you know, this is this is actually. I I take Vince's point. Employer's compensation is defined. Uh, employer's contribution is defined. An employer's base contribution, but it does not. Where does it say? Where is participants' compensation defined? That's what I'm not seeing. Maybe I didn't go back far enough. It does six, six, six A B, I think. Six, 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 uh, chapter six, I guess, paragraph A, sub paragraph B, or subheading or something, base salary. Why am I not seeing this? Page 32, Lynn. Yeah, the compensation shall be the base participants full salary or base salary is limited under paragraph 2.8 of the plan. 
the box you check at six in the form. That's checked currently as I base see. Hours. Okay, yeah, it's boy, it's yeah, I see what it's doing. So if we don't have a Roth, should we take the word Roth out of six B? It implies we have a Roth elective contribution, but we don't have a Roth plan. Mm -hmm. I'm on page 32. Right. Right, but I have, we, have, we can have electric contrib contribu elective contributions and or Roth. Right. We don't have or Roth, but we have elective contributions. Yeah. Right, it does that, say yeah, or. That's right. What Mike is, is, was saying is take out the and or Roth elective contributions. Right. It just says employee elective contributions. It says only one applies. Right, but there's it. no indication of which one does. Doesn't make any difference, it does it? it? I suppose it doesn't make a difference. Because we haven't checked the Roth elective contributions box, right. so. If you make a change in this. Although it doesn't, it doesn't say only G or H applies. Do you have any feedback, Eli? <laughs> Sorry, finding my mute button. I, I wouldn't edit it. I think it clearly uh, implies if only one applies is the boxes you check at the bottom, meaning only check one box. Um, and I also um, read that to mean if you have Roth elective contributions, the reason why they put and or in there is because they realize you may not have both. So I, I wouldn't recommend changing it, but I, back, I understand why you're considering it. Well, it's, it's just weird to say and or, and then say only to say and, and then only one applies. But I yeah, think I the only one applies probably are. goes to the choices of base or full. I think yes. that's probably what's intended. I think but it's, so. it's a little, it may be inartfully drafted. Okay. Um, the other question that I had was on in-service withdrawals. And I just wondered why we aren't allowing people to take money out um, following normal retirement age and, and 59 and a half. I mean, the, the tax code, as I recall, allows that. It's a long time ago for me, but... Um, Is are, are we? Is it a problem for us if we allow that? Oh. Mike, I'm, I'm thinking. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it would be a problem. This is just. Uh, I mean, from H, from Beth and my perspective, I think I'll, I can speak for Beth and I here, but this is essentially a, a uh, going through the motions document for those legal beagles at NRECA uh, to make sure you all have approved this plan and there's no changes to it from last year to this year. It's, it's the same thing. Um, if we want to change in service withdrawals, I would assume we can. I don't know if there's a cost associated to that uh, or not. But I would say we should make that a negotiable item. It's part of the terms and conditions of employment. But yeah, I don't think I don't it's... recall when we when we negotiated the union contract that there was any discussion of this at all. Um, but not I, to I, this I, detail, I, absolutely. I can not. envision a situation where somebody wants to take some money out. Uh, they want to buy something. They want to go on a on a trip. They want to uh, do some make and make some other investment. They can take they, loans. They can take loans. Yeah. Um, and and they're paying it back to themselves. Yep. But they're they're limited in being able to do that. But how are we harmed if they take it? If they want to take the money out altogether? Yeah, we're not. 
I mean, they have to pay tax on it, but there's no penalty at that point. So I don't know, it just, it just struck me as odd that we weren't, that we weren't allowing it. Um, well, if we can allow it and it's a no cost item, would you like us to do that? That would be my view, but I don't. Lynn, I, were, and you're, when I first heard you, I thought you were saying they make withdrawals at the, when they're beyond the age. Yes. Be past the penalty point, the penalty. Yes. Age. Great. And that's what you're advocating. Yeah. Which is, which is 59 and a half. The way this is right. phrased, it's 59 and a half um, and, and normal retirement age. The normal retirement age right. on, on this is 65. And any, any employee younger than that could only access their money by way of loans. Yes. Right. Or, right. or if there's a financial hardship. Right. Yeah. I don't know why we, why we would limit the financial. I, they want to withdraw it and they're over the ages people to take it no i do oh i wouldn't change i wouldn't change anything i mean you run the risk there that the union will want to renegotiate the whole thing can we unilaterally change a piece we can unilaterally give them more than they get now there won't be any complaints with that strikes me as though it's a poor, poor precedent yeah, I mean, it's a term and condition of employment. There's no question about it. But if it's a no cost adder, I see no harm. I think these things have been written this way. I know that that's the way it worked in my previous and only employer in the last 40 years. You couldn't take the money out. I mean, they were trying to do you a favor by making sure that you had money in your retirement. <laughs> Yeah. You can take a loan if you wanted to. I, I'm in no rush to change it. I understand the request, but I, I don't feel. I don't see this is not a fall on your sword point. I, it struck me as odd when I, when I read it. That was that was that was why I raised it. Um, you know, I'm 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 I'm. It only affects a couple of employees, I think. Yeah. And you know, it strikes me that you know we might rather be in the position if they want to take money out and they, for whatever reason, they don't want to take a loan. Um, that uh, a um, Why not? But if, if people want to leave it alone, I don't, I, you know, I don't feel strongly about it. I don't know where other people. Oh, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm just one voice. Michael, you seem to be on the other side. No, I, I've taken loans against my 401k and I have no problem. I mean, obviously yeah. you have the option of taking a loan. Some people, they want to do a loan. They just want to get the money and not have to think about it anymore. I don't think it's a big deal one way or the other. Okay. Okay. Those those were my only questions. Did anybody have anything else? Okay. So um, we need a motion. Then is that correct, Eli? Yes. This resolution needs to be adopted. Yes. Not the not the form where you check the sheets, but the resolution. This, this resolution. Obviously, and Lynn, I'll, I'll, I'll make those corrections to your name and title for a fresh copy. Yep, and it it needs to be dated appropriately too. Well, today is the fifteenth. Oh, the version I had um, said. May something. So. Uh, <laughs> it may have been okay. updated since then. Um, where does it? Where does it link? I'm reading this resolution. Where does it link the resolution to? 
what we just went through. That's, um, I'm sorry. You're muted, Eli. Um, I believe that is just part of the amendment restatement and continuance of the plan. I mean, there is the actual plan, um, which is much more comprehensive than just that um, form with the check boxes. But, but it's all part of that. But it's referencing an adoption agreement that isn't defined. It doesn't say it's the adoption agreement that's defined or attached or it just says the adoption agreement. It could be adopting three children See, and having some of the other provisions. What is the name of the form? Um, so the name of the form that you guys were just looking at is adoption agreement A. So you're right, it's not defined in the resolution, but that is the name of the document. Um, right, I just, just I just think if we're, if we're, are we stuck with the language of the resolution also, or can we change the language of the resolution? Oh, I, I imagine you can change um, the, let me um, go back. I don't have that on my screen. One second. I get dropped off for a second. Can you tell me what page we're on? Um, we're just on the page resolution. It's a one page. page okay, thanks. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my I just have it as a separate document. Um, I think you absolutely need to make sure that it um, you're comfortable with the resolution. And if one of the things you want to change, you're obviously changing your name, spelling, and uh, your position. But if you want to define the adoption agreement as the document we were just looking at, then. But it says that that adoption agreement is effective the first day of July, 2022. So it's in the past. Yep, I, I think that's by, I think you're gonna. So should it be effective it. as of, not effective the first day? Uh, it wasn't effective then. It was effective as of that date. Uh, maybe that's hyper technical, but that's like I said. I think you should feel free to edit this so that it's you are signing the resolution. Essentially, you're going back and um, making the amended plan applicable starting July first, two thousand twenty-two. And I think the first recital should be will be effective as of July one, yeah, twenty-two. Yeah. Should the agreement be instead of RUS, REA, to be consistent with the resolution? The resolutions cause about REA 46190. And next page, the actual associations is RUS number. Same number, it says RUS instead of REA. Should they be the same? No idea. Those are different in my, there's the rural uter utility service and then the Rural Electrification. Rural Electrification Association. And the, uh, but, they, but they've got the same number. It's, it's the just same number. Different. They and changed rural, their name. Yeah, they changed, they changed RBS it. several years ago. They probably just didn't change the title on this document. Okay. RUS to me is the Rural Utility Standards, construction standards, engineering standards, all that stuff. Yeah, there's also the Rural Utility Services, which I believe is a yeah. sub-agency of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Yes, it is. But by the way, on, on page 30, it, 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 the header, it says for use only by rural electric cooperatives, which we are not. Mm -hmm. Right, we are we are a uh, we're a municipal utility, is what we right. Are. But they call us a something else member of the NRC. Member. Right, but this but this plan says for use only by 
rural electric cooperatives. I don't know who comes up with this stuff, but it's it's <laughs> it it's, does, um, uh, it, it's in and on the page earlier it says authorize and direct the cooperatives, cooperatives or participating employers. Yeah, we're an associate <laughs> member. I think that's what we're called. Is that right, Beth? That sounds right. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that we're that we're uh, eligible to be participating in this, but we're not eligible to be using this form. Well, the way it's written by its terms. That's all. OK, so we're going to change. Um, Is the adoption agreement going to be attached here too? Attached to this? As far as I'm, there were the two documents forwarded together in which they're expecting to be okay. returned. So yes, I mean, they're separate documents as emailed, but it clearly references, the resolution references the adoption agreement. Can we strike the be it further resolved? Because it, I mean, the only thing that's being done is this and, and we're gonna, and we are gonna sign it. So why should we be delegating? Um, I guess I see that is to the degree which you may need the, the board is authorizing the restatement of this plan some follow-up later that you need to do related to this it might just be easier lynn having okay. you authorized right. nine documents if you take that out you'd have to come back to the full board okay okay and so just as a as a side Beth, the minutes are going to have to include this whole resolution. So I think, yeah, it just needs to, the as of in the first recital and the first reference to adoption agreement should say attached here too. Got it. Does anyone else have any changes that they would like to make in either? the resolution or adoption agreement A. Then would someone make the motion? And I think it needs to be read into the records of the whole thing. Yep. Why don't you make it? Because I'm signing this, I would rather that um, someone else. And do you, you may have to read it in though, right? Because you marked it up a bit that. Okay, I'll, 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 so I'll make a motion. Maybe, yeah. I think I can make a motion and, and still be the one that sure. says it's a true excerpt. Okay. I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the amendment and restatement of the retirement security and or 401k pension plan for Hardwick Electric Department REA 46190-001. Whereas Hardwick Electric Department is a participating employer in the 401k pension 401k plan. Whereas the board of commissioners of Hardwick Electric Department is aware that the plan must periodically be amended to comply with new or changed regulations, rulings, legislation, and plan operations, and that this restatement will be effective as of July 1, 2022. Therefore, be it resolved that this board authorizes the July 1, 2022 amendment restatement and continuance of the plan to conform in its entirety with all the provisions of the governing plan document of the plan, 
through the execution of the adoption agreement attached here too, which includes all of the provisions of the entity's most recently executed adoption agreement and any compliance clarifications needed to conform with plan operations and be it further resolved in the event that the timing of the restatement does not correspond with regularly scheduled meetings of the Board of Commissioners, the Board does hereby authorize and direct uh, the cooperatives or the participating employers authorized representative to execute all necessary documents and to take any and all further actions necessary to carry out the July 1, 2022 amendment and restatement of the plan and, and NRECA is fully authorized to rely on this designation in processing the restatement of the plan. Is there? I second your motion. Thank you. I just, I wanna make sure that it includes the six full months of employment for both the employer and employee contribute contributions. That will be in the attached document. And yes. I will make sure that I see that before I sign this. Yep. Any other comments or questions? Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? The resolution passes. And with me, Mike? <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you, sir. All Thank right, have you. a you lovely are. Monday night. Bye. Yeah. You, you too. Bye-bye. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is Visa card authorizations. Who is TCM Bank? That's the card company that Union Bank uses for their credit cards. So right now, I'm the only authorized user, signer, et cetera, on the account. And Recently, Beth had a receipt she was trying to track down that I didn't recognize, nobody recognized. So she was trying to find out, hey, is this a good, good bill on us or not? And couldn't even get them to answer any questions because she's not on the account. So TCM Bank requires that all of you uh, in our minutes, name your, your authorized signing officers, which we are requesting you to do and include myself and Beth on that list so that we can tell them it's done and she can now be on your list. And just the two of, and just the two of you. Yes. yes. Okay, I'll make a motion. I move that Michael Sullivan and Beth Essery be authorized signing officers for HED's Visa credit card with TCM Bank. Second. Any discussion? No. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You just made Beth's passes. life easier. <laughs> okay. So that takes us to the cash flow discussion and the monthly financial report and account write offs. So I don't so know. Beth, you... Beth has some questions here. Okay. Um, and she also has another thing to look for your approval on on write offs. Go ahead, Beth. Yeah. First of all, on the financial reports, are there any questions? My, uh, no, Roger had started with some, but Mike kind of answered them in his general manager's report. That's right. Yeah. I had one silly uh, question that you can dispose of quickly, I think. In the uh, tree service right away clearing, the uh, in your accounts they come through listed two ways. One way is tree, you know, right of way clearing, and then occasionally they come through and they say truck repair. Yeah, so I can I can speak yeah. to that. Yeah. So Adam, yeah, yeah Adam, our uh, tree contractor, 
is a multi-skilled tool. Not only does he provide <laughs> right-of-way maintenance, uh, not only does he do danger tree removals, but he's also a fabulous truck mechanic. And when we have a truck breakdown in Craftsbury or wherever, rather than calling tr Clark's Truck Center and they come with a tow truck and charge us $3,000 to tow it down to Jericho and fix it, 99% of the time, Adam can fix it right here. Got it. Okay. So That's great. That. That's great. I got lots, it. He does lots of other work, uh, including truck repair. That is truly a versatile contractor. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> okay. I, I had one question, and maybe it goes to the cash flow issue. I'm not sure what was what was intended for that. But I, I noticed that um, the net change was bigger in a negative way than what we had anticipated in the budget. And my question um, is, do we still think we're gonna be okay come year end? Um, on the cash flow, and Mike, you can, correct, you can jump in here. On the cash flow, we a lot of these, um, the negative cash flow for this month resulted from capital additions. And when we were budgeting the cash flow, we didn't exactly know when those costs were going to occur. These particular costs, they happened in this month. But when it's capital additions, they're harder to budget to know exactly which months they're going to occur. So the, the really key question, even though I got comfortable reading Mike's comment at the end of the page about the month, what's really important to us is your the two of you projecting forward through the end of the year, well, I, what I think, at least speaking for myself, I'd be uncomfortable, or at least we should have a real resolution of the full board of commissioners. If we're going to, if we're going to subsidize the operating budget and consume a huge chunk of that cash that we have to get through the year, we need you to tell us ahead of time so that we can decide to do that rather than just allow it to happen. Um, Cause I, it feels, that's my suggestion. Cause it feels like a big decision to be basically under billing and subsidizing with this cash that we got through the settlement. Um, so do you have a, yeah. So that gets to the projection question. And I, and I don't know if that means that's that's also covering the question you asked a minimum cash balance. I think that's our way of saying, at least for me alone, for God's sake, let's not chew through all of our cash just subsidizing rates without consciously as a group deciding that's the right thing to do with the money. Exactly. Is that what you meant, Mike and Beth, when you put on there the minimum cash balance question? Well, yeah, I mean, it was the. Am I muted? You hear me? You hear me? Um, so Beth and I started chatting about our notes from last month's meeting, and, it, and we we surfaced more questions than we did answers. <laughs> so we we're looking, we we're really looking for some specific direction from you. This is great. I just wrote this down. We'll project the rest of the year out for you, no problem. Um, yeah. I the only uh, kind of unknown out of the out of the left field expenses that we have pending that I'm going to originate are the uh, parking lot behind the building here at the business office and the new retaining wall. That's about a $25,000 project. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and also the bulkhead installation, which is the first stage of the sluice way uh, replacement at the Wilkett Hydro. That's been, that got back burnered for two years because of COVID. Um, and I'm actually haven't got that schedule confirmed yet with the contractor, so it might get pushed off anyway, but that's another, uh, 22,000. So okay. I'm looking at probably $50,000. <laughs> unexpected or yeah, yeah, stuff that and, I'll and what's really that. important there. I think I'd suggest to the, the, the other commissioners that I think what's really important for us to have from you and I'll always think of it this way is compartmentalize and separate the operating loss subsidies from the capital expenditures because using this money for capital expenditures I think will come to the view that it's a, that that's appropriate use of the money to yep. some point 
Yeah. And that what we what we really all need to look at are we subsidizing our operating losses with it? And to what extent? So if you could just keep those two things separate. So so the figure for this month, if if I'm doing my my math right, is is that it was forty six thousand was subsidizing operating losses. Yeah, Mike had in the end the last part of his manager's report did a pretty nice job. Yeah, so that so that's what, that's, a, that's the difference between the one twenty four and the one seventy is forty six. Yes. But over the course I of the year, that's a half a million dollars if we have operating losses. Oh like yeah, that. that's why. Yeah, right. that's why. And and you know, July is already ba a baked cake, even though we don't have fully formed financials. Sort of like, was July good or bad? You two must have a sense of that. And then, you know, how's August and September looking? And you know, you guys can read the windage on those things, whereas we're kind of dealing with data that's so far behind us. Yeah, they were a little bit clueless. So yeah, I didn't I didn't dig further into the weeds on the remaining difference, but you know a lot of that is fuel costs have quadrupled. You know if I if I can spend that time here and we'll get we'll get a full layout for you for next month. And do you, do you have enough information, Beth? I'm I'm getting a clear picture here of what we want to be providing. Yeah, I have, right? yeah, and, and and I Lynn, I don't know what you and others think, but you know, if if what you're projecting isn't half a million dollars negative, even if it's 300 or 250, you know, if it's a meaningful six figure number that's clearly not going to get better January 1st, I think we'd want to start the dialogue about what's the process around rates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A rate case. And I've never been through it, so I don't know what the process is, but you know, how long does it take? What steps does it require? What dialogue do we need to have? But you know, what would be scary is if we start, if we say, well, we're burning up a lot, and then it takes a super long time to get a, a rate case through, yeah. then we've yeah. kind of been, neg you know, we, we could hold ourselves accountable for being asleep at the switch, you know, which we want to- I do, I do have us on uh, BEPS's radar. I think we're next up to, sit down with Steve Farman and talk about rates. So maybe next month or the month after he can come give us a rundown of where he sees us heading in the next two to four years. And if you could come to that with your with your your yeah. projection of how quickly do we need it and how much is it, you know, sort of what's the problem and how big is it? Yeah, Mike, I don't know if you remember, if you know offhand and I could go back and look a year or so. But before we had the settlement, how much cash on hand were we running typically? And you remember what yeah, that number so was? We, when I first got here, we were at the end of the month, we had under $100,000. And over a three or four year period, I got it up to where we were carrying about 200000 at the end of the month. And yeah. mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be remember, in your seat. I wouldn't want to yeah. be in your seat with less than two hundred. No. Yeah. And I remember yeah. talking to Beth and Wayne and others about this. Uh, Beth. Lynn, I'm sorry. That's okay. And, uh, and saying, boy, you know, I'd really like to have twice what we have because that's not enough. So I'm thinking a number like 400 is, I'm comfortable there or higher. Is that I think mean? one month makes sense. Yeah. I think a month makes a great deal of sense. And that's, I mean, we typically about $550,000 a month comes in here and about $550,000 a month goes out. Yeah. So. All it would take is is one disaster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and but that says we should be looking. Should be moving. At at um, at rate relief. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm afraid we should. Doing that, I think we need to be looking at not just. We need to be since since it's been so long, we should be doing. We should be looking at the design of the rates, not just yeah. the level of them. Yeah, and other people have been doing that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you, you on your balance sheet, you actually list a line of credit with a with a zero balance, and I think it's attributed to a particular bank. But on recent conversations, it sounded like we actually don't have a line of credit sitting there ready to draw. No, 
because that's another thing, you know, if you start looking at we're getting there, we might want to just have that negotiate. It's always better to negotiate with that before you yeah, need we don't money. need it. Yeah. <laughs> HED, HED has had a line of credit in the past, but we don't have But we don't have one now. So your right. primary right. bank, particularly where you have this balance, might be it doesn't seem urgent, but maybe it is a good idea. Uh, Lynn, what do you think? You know, should we empower Mike and Beth to go to the bank and because we'd have to make a resolution to establish it, wouldn't we? But presumably, yeah. Presumably, it would be a floating rate. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, so and we won't want to do it. It'll be a terrible. Right. No, rate. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, but, I think. Yeah, I think I, I think we need to be ready. We don't want to be in a position of having to go when we when we really need it. It may be more difficult. At, it would be more difficult at that point. And we don't need a board resolution until it's being signed. So you could go out and line it up. That's right. We could I make think a that, that would be the thing is is to you know to and and then one before it's signed, it needs to be presented. Yeah. I guess the question is since we're not borrowing on it, because there are certain, if I know if we do a bond, we need to go to the town. And it, there any, needs to any money we borrow for more than a, uh, 12 months has to go to a 108 vote. We have to get voter approval. So as a result, as a revolve, this would be structured as a revolver. So it wouldn't meet that test. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't. I appreciate that you uh, share your concerns and feelings, Roger, but I'm not quite as far down there as you are. <laughs> good, good. And you know, that's what I hope. Yeah. That's what I hope. Then we'll all be happy. That's great. We do need the, we do need the water to continue flowing down the Lamoille River toward <laughs> badly. badly. <laughs> Or Walcott, I should say. Yeah. Although right now we're getting ready for annual shutdown, so low water is good. Okay. I'll send you some. Anything? I I think we segued um, partly into the annual report, uh, not the annual, the manager's report, and. Um, I did have one other thing: the account write-offs. Yes. Thank you. Those are accounts that um, are disconnected prior to 2020. They all owed less than $35. Mm -hmm. And my, my suggestion is to get your approval just to write them off. Now we do have an active process that whenever anyone can, comes in for a new account, the system can go back and look to see if they owe us any prior monies. So we can do that, but these are less than $35. They've been disconnected since 2019. I'll, I'll make a motion that we grant authority to Beth to write off all those listed on this attachment here. Is there a second? Second. Thank Any you. Discussion? Some of those people are alive and well right here in town. But they don't have service with us in their name. Right. Perry Oil doesn't have service? Nope. David Rogers? Wow. Um, hmm. Okay, well, it's not very much money, but... No, no it's not. It, you want to second it? Matt? I think it was a second. I second already. Mike did. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any uh, motion passes. Um, seeing this, I mean, I wonder, because I, I don't generally feel that the board needs to approve writing off these sorts of amounts, that we, we should have some kind of a write-off policy. Um, and, and Beth, if you want to maybe 
put something together and suggest what you think is is a reasonable approach and and then we could discuss that because it, it seems to me these amounts are so trivial um and it's old accounts and and maybe it's something along these lines if an account is you know it's more than two years whatever mm -hmm. i don't but it just struck me yeah. that, that that could be something that makes everybody's lives easier and that's what i use i have seen historically in my past experiences there's a standard um set of rules to go by i just couldn't find any here at Hardwick. so i'll come up with something for that would be great, that would be great. <laughs> okay which takes us now to the manager's report any questions or comments I guess the one thing is, is that we're being asked to do this MOU um, on, on the beach. I want your input on it. Um, so the origin of it is um, Dave Upson, the town manager, has come over multiple, probably a dozen times. Uh, with issues with people wanting to do this or that at the beach or the toilets are broken at the beach. How do we handle that? And there's a lot of confusion from a lot of different people. There was, there was a, a group that wanted to do a movie night on Wednesdays at the beach and didn't know how they needed to go about doing that. So um, Opie and I put this thing together, open to get better information out for people and to clear up some of the confusion and make it a better process. So I threw out a draft, he made a couple changes and I wanted to make sure you were all on board with it. Well, is the CBA, the what Isla runs, the, the beach committee? Yes. We're Gasp Caspian Beach Association, isn't it? It's referred to in different places. In the beginning, it says the Caspian Lake Beach Association, and then it's the Caspian Beach Association. It should be consistent, whatever yep, it is. Okay. It should be consistent. Okay, they are appointed by whom? I believe the select board in Hardwick does that. Well, I'm not, I think both Hardwick and Greensboro somehow. Okay. And I, I think in the uh, right. number number 10, if you could add, this includes, but it is not limited to the restroom facilities and. No. Yeah. No. Why not? I think this includes, I, I will. Because we're trying well, to restrict, all, we don't want them fiddling with stuff. Yeah, I, and frankly, I'd take out the okay. et cetera. I would say this includes yeah. the restroom facilities, the picnic tables, benches, signage, lighting, and mowing. Okay. And trash, and, trash and removal. So I think and, it should. You should add trash removal. Okay, that's fine. If there's anything else, let's 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 get it on the list. But I don't want it to be, um, including but not limited to. Okay, and maybe should... a limit, eliminate hired staff and volunteers. I mean, I guess that includes anyone, oh, but no, oh, no, that's what they do. That's their primary function, right? But it's not our, it's not HED's business how they do it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't doesn't that's, matter. That's Just... okay. That's 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 okay. Yeah. I mean, the question that Mike <laughs> asked was about having someone from the board. Uh, no. Right, Dave Upson said he, he he put that in there and was strongly suggesting that one of you participate. And I said, as well, long I'm, not sure. I'm totally supported as long as it's Nat. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to blow my brain. Down I'm, I'm not too. Totally, I'm not I totally second, supportive, second. but I think Michael is terrific. <laughs> yeah, I just we can't can, do it anymore. <laughs> we can take I, that out because I, I, we've I not had it. 
I tried to explain to him that, you know, the one person on that committee can't speak for the board. That's, I, the, I don't, problem. I don't. That's the problem. All, all that somebody can do is take back. Listen, right? I don't think, listen. I don't think it's a good idea at all. Uh, I mean, I was at that meeting and they kept asking me about HED uh, and that would made it just made it difficult. Uh, and I just would punt and say, Michael's not here. But uh, <laughs> the, the issue is we own the land and we care about that issue. Uh, the running of all of that stuff, like garbage and boats, we don't want to have nothing to do with. But we do want to be clear in there, Mike, that uh, you know, where our interests are. I mean, at what point do they call you? What you'd like in there is something that said, call Isla, unless it has to do with ownership. But I don't know how to say I, that. I, 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 I think there is, and I understand why Opie wants to put something in. I don't think it necessarily needs to be a board member or maybe maybe it should be framed that 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 you know we will try to have somebody, you know, so provided yeah. that we get no let, let me finish. The provided that we get notice of the meetings in a timely way. I don't think we want notice we've never had much of anything to do with this. They've been in existence for years. Um, and in the last couple of years there's been more heat. Exactly. Uh, and, we've and, never, and, and we've so never had a, a, a member of the Board of Commissioners on their committee. I don't not, see any reason. Not a member of the committee. I'm not suggesting anybody be a member of the committee. What I am suggesting is that we would make an effort to have someone from the electric department, whether it's a board member, whether it's Mike, whether it's Beth, whether it's somebody else at the meetings to listen. That doesn't work. If you're at the meeting, they ask you questions and you can't Why just can't? say. Well, can't can't say the question is sometimes the question can be answered. Sometimes if, if they can't. I think the people should come to all of you to our meeting and ask what they need to ask. They almost never need to talk to us. It really is true. Most of their issues are mowing, backed up toilets, broken doors, locks, hiring people, cutting the grass, cutting trees, um, hiring people to inspect the boats early in the morning, um, paying them all. I mean, it's it, it, picnic tables, rocks, mowing. I mean, there are a lot of issues. And there are issues those... with the slabs of, of, of concrete in the, I don't know, the stream. I mean, that, that we've heard about. Well, that's, that is one of, the few granite, things, granite. that's one of the few things that we're in charge of. That and, and the, the bulwark on either side of the dam itself. Uh, and there's no, there's no question or debate there. They know that. Um, I, I, I even think there's a little risk having somebody involved with us. I mean, because because they keep trying to get us to do stuff that is is not in our interest and it's not in our purview. Yeah, Opie is trying to be helpful here. He thought it we was. We don't have we don't have any agreement. I mean, this is the closest thing to an agreement about the maintenance of the beach. I mean, this is yeah, our yeah. land. This is our land. We could be sued. If God forbid something happened to somebody at the beach, Hardwick Electric can be sued. Let, well, let's... a guy got run over there a couple of weeks ago and got trucked off, left Damn. for dead. Yep, damn near killed. Um, but that's true. But, but I mean, if, there, if, there, if there was if there was some hidden risk in the water, um, right. if there are policies that are inherently risky at the beach, I mean, dogs are allowed on the beach. Okay. Um, if somebody got sick from, and I'm not saying we should ban dogs on the beach. I love dogs, you know, but. It, it, well, you did got bit the other day on the beach by a dog. So yep. now they're talking about not letting dogs go there. 
but so as as the owner of the property we have potential liability that's true and so what is done and what is not done if trash isn't collected at the end of the day if there's a nuisance on the property that's our problem not anybody else's problem i think but lynn we have, we have Brooke on the phone she can correct me right. It strikes me though, Lynn, that, that what Opie's done here with Mike, that this doc, I think we're better off with this document than without it. Oh, because it does, it does clarify for people, gives, it gives people some clarity about who's in what role and what I like about it. Maybe you can find a way to make it better. But what I like about it is that we're really not involved in operating the beach. Yeah. And, no. and I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm comfortable that the way it's drafted, that comes across. And in fact, I do think, honestly, after listening to Nat, we're better off not having a representative. So Hope he may not understand that, but but I think it's reasonable for us not but, to. Well, and if he has, then we can explain to him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, th I was at the beach yesterday, I just went to take a look. I think the biggest concern is there were kids playing on the downstream side of the dam in the stream and there were people walking across the dam and how do we control those pieces so that we're not in trouble for something going wrong it's easy for a kid to fall in that how stream that get hurt or we have a sign that says stay off the dam yeah well that's not a, i can tell you that's not enough so yeah because it's I'll easy to walk share. across the dam I, i'm sorry i yeah, agree no. with i agree with you mike and i think a lot of people walk across that dam and it it deteriorates the concrete and i wish yeah. nobody went across that dam. um that being said the back in the 40s lynn the town uh the village of hardwick ha leased the beach for like two years at a time you know for a dollar and it had all the things in the lease that uh Greensboro was going to be responsible for, et cetera. I've seen those documents around. I have them in my office buried. I'm going to dig them out and get them out to you also. And maybe in a, in a, along with this document, we should get them to sign a lease. That's, you know, for $5. It isn't about money. It's about assigning well, responsibility. It, it, yeah, but it, it, it also gives them then rights. That, what that, we that, want, that, Lynn, I think, is to have the town selectmen in Greensboro and the town selectmen in Hardwick, they make the decisions with the beach committee. That's 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 fine. I think I think what I'm hearing is all of us want the last sentence in nine out. Okay, so I think that's that's you know that's done. That's done. Okay. Um, Brooks trying I, to chime I, in. I, I think the issue of, of a lease is probably something for another day. But if there are issues with people going in the stream and it's danger and, and there and there's danger there, if there are issues with people going on the dam because it's dangerous to them and it degrades the dam, why don't we put up a fence? Well, <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll be, I'd love to. It'll be I taken down. To. It'll it'll be taken down within the day. By whom? You put up a fence. You say this is private. You know this is private property. No trespassing. And then you have, uh, Brooke. I don't know if you disagree with this, but you're, I, you're going I, yeah. against. You're going against about fifty or eighty years of tradition. It will be cut away in no time. Nat's buddies out there. A chain link fence. <laughs> so, so I I'm not familiar with the document that you're reviewing, Lynn. But um, what about an indemnification provision? Like, it's, it's not. Reasonable. No, no, no. no. It, it's it's an MOU. It's not. It, well, that doesn't matter. You you can still they can take responsibility if they're supervising this area. Do they have lifeguards? They have people there. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I like I like Lynn's suggestion that we view this we view this in two stages. We're better off with the MOU than we were without it. And then if we want to if we want to go to the next level, let's put let's discuss that at a, yeah. at a later date. Mike can do a little bit. And, and if we do do a lease, an indemnity would make sense in that. Yeah. 
but that's going to get. Uh, we can't. This is a, this is a one page good. document, Brooke, with, 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 it's almost bullet points. Um, and I think if we, if we go to something, start putting in indemnity clauses, um, we're talking about something much longer. In the interest of Nat, can I just suggest that? I know he's already told us he has to leave soon. Can we go to these executive sessions, which seem pretty important? Yes. Brooks is critical. Do we need to, though, if, if I mean, the, the MOU is talking about HED signing this. So I think we do need a motion uh, to authorize Mike to sign this. I make Without a motion. Second. Second. I make a, uh, I'd like to, uh, well, I think it's it's as amended. Right, okay. Uh, which is, and the amendments being taken out the last line of nine. Right. And adding trash removal. And removing, etc. And cetera. removing, etc. cetera. Yeah, got it. So with that amendment, are we voting on the, is there any further discussion on the MOU? The only thing I might add, which seems silly, but it's a big <clears throat> discussion when I've been at meetings is, because it's not covered in the trash, is goose droppings. That's a big deal there every morning. Did we want to have nothing to do with that. <laughs> no, no, that's why I'm saying we should add that it's their responsibility <laughs> with the <laughs> trash. Scat of all species. Yeah. <laughs> Human. <laughs> and animal all. When I mean, they had to cut a padlock the other day, there was all kinds of crisis. But, you know, because the toilets were backing up. Be on those committees. Can we just say restroom facilities, sanitation? And I would just do uh, signage, lighting, mowing, trash, and other waste removal. Hey. That okay? That's lovely. <laughs> okay. Um, just to keep the things clear, can we um, have a, can we, Whoever made the motion, can that one be withdrawn and then we have a motion, then make a motion to accept it as amended? Thought that's what we did. Nope. Well, then we've got two, then we've got an amendment and, and a motion, whatever. Uh, I, think, I think it needs to be clear what we're authorizing Mike to sign. Well. Who, who made the original motion? I don't know. Nobody knows. I think it was. I make a motion we accept the me member of understanding with the edit to item nine to remove uh, BOC as part of the. There are others too. Commissioners, but part of the uh, beach committee. This is not a big legal statement. That's that's not the that's not the whole thing. Uh -huh. can, can can the. Okay. Want me to tell you what I've got? Sure. Yeah. Okay. My understanding is that I've been approved. You're looking for a motion to approve uh, my processing this document that we've reviewed with the modifications of eliminating the last sentence in number nine and changing number 10 to read from May 1st to October 30th, the CBA will manage the daily upkeep and maintenance of the beach property with hired staff and volunteers. This includes the restroom facilities, picnic tables, benches, signage, lighting, mowing, and trash and other waste removal. The CBA will budget for the continued maintenance and or repair of these assets with town funds appropriated by both Harvick and Greensboro. Okay. I think Mike has accurately reflected the motion. So that's... <laughs> Okay, and there was a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? You're opposed? No. no. In favor. 
Uh, so the motion passes, which takes us to executive session. And is there a motion? I guess I'll make a motion. I move that we go into executive session to discuss a legal matter with council, the premature disclosure of which could prejudice the interests of our mm -hmm. electric department. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. We are in executive session at 636. The recording needs to go off. And it is 7.29 p.m. We are out of executive session. No action was taken. I would like to suggest that we have a special meeting on the 22nd of, um, of August, sorry, at 5 p.m. Uh, to continue the discussion that we were having in executive session. Are folks okay with that? Yes. And yes. Mike, if you would uh, if you would warn that, that would be great. Will do. Okay. Um, there's another executive session. Um, okay, I'll make the motion. I move that we go into executive session to discuss a confidential customer matter. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, it is 7.30 p.m. and we are in executive session. Oh, it would just, just oh, sorry. It is 7.47 and we are out of executive session. Is there any other business? No action taken. No action taken, thank you. Is there any other business? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? I move, so move. Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, we are adjourned at 7.48 p.m. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Thank you. Guys.